What's going on guys? Welcome into End on a Make. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple huge scoring performances we saw tonight, but before I get into all that, just want to extend um, thoughts and prayers up for Jamal Murray. Uh, he went down late in the Warriors Nuggets game tonight. I think there was like 50 seconds left in the game. It was a non-contact injury. Looks like his knee just kind of buckled as he was driving in for a layup. Uh, he refused the wheelchair, which was really cool, and ended up being helped off the court. Um, but it's clear that something was was pretty bad there with that. I mean, non-contact injuries are never a good thing. And just hopefully, you know, hopefully they get a positive uh, result tomorrow that... <clears throat> I don't even know how to, how to put it. Hopefully they find out that the timetable isn't as severe as it could be with those non-contact injuries. Because that team is a ton of fun to watch. They've been on a roll as of late. And to not have him for an extended period of time or maybe even the remainder of the season would be devastating to, you know, a team with Nikola Jokic playing at an MVP level and just such a fun team to watch play basketball when they are complete. Uh, so with that said, uh, I want to start with the historic performance tonight from Stephen Curry becomes the Warriors' all-time leading scorer, passing Wilt Chamberlain 17,818 points. He dropped 53 tonight, including 48 in the first three quarters. And the rest of the team had 63 points total, so he scored almost half of their points himself. And that's kind of been the case for how the Warriors' season has gone so far this year. It's like when Steph is there and he's out there, they are a historic pace offense. And when he's not, they're like bottom level offense of all time. Uh, it's insane to see. And it really quantifies like his value. It puts an actual value to just one player. And you can see the impact that he has. Now, as for being the all time franchise leader now, I remember when he came into the league, I remember the Timberwolves passing on drafting him twice. I remember the early ankle injuries. Uh, he had, I think, two or three straight seasons where he ended the season early to have ankle surgery. There was a lot of talk of should the Warriors trade him or should they trade Monte Ellis? And, you know, looking back on all of that now, there's really there's a lot of good articles that were written um, like 2014, 2015 when the Warriors really started to turn it around and become – you know, the juggernaut team that they have been for the latter part of the 2010s. And it's all about how he basically had to, like, relearn how to walk and run to keep his feet and ankles healthy. And it's, it's incredible stuff. And it's just nice to see that potential that he had in college and in those early seasons. We got to see it to, you know, it's almost peak fullest extent at this level. And that's just, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. You think of dudes like Derrick Rose where, you know, they get hurt. It's a freak injury. And then that athleticism or that skill is just never quite the same. So to see him consistently ever since then just constantly show up big and and is truly one of the best shooters of all time, I think. And I know a lot of people think he is the best. Uh, I lean towards Clay Thompson, his Warriors teammate. But that's, I mean... It's just personal preference at that point. But for Steph, anytime you pass Wilt Chamberlain in a record book, you know you are doing something big because that man lived to just generate stats and hold records. Like He was like a robot on a mission when it came to statistics. So unbelievable performance by Steph. Ten threes tonight. Like, and like I said, half of his team's points basically. He's a little bummed that he didn't get more time in the fourth just to see how far he could push it see if he could break you know clay thompson's record for 14 threes in a game or you know something fun like that but at the same time the most important thing for golden state is they get the win over the nuggets and it keeps them in the playoff hunt for the play-in tournament and for the back half of the conference so i'm sure you know all things considered he's got to be pretty happy with that now, there were a couple other huge performances from the night, and I'll just go over those really quick. Uh, first, Russell Westbrook just continues to turn back the hands of time and look like the player we all knew and loved when he was in Oklahoma City. 
He had another triple-double tonight, of course. 24 points, 14 rebounds, 14 assists. Oh, sorry, 25 points, 14 rebounds, 14 assists. And he pushes the Wizards to a W over the league be- or I think West best, um, Utah Jazz. So they get a double-digit win, or they had a double-digit lead, and they end up holding on to beat the Jazz. Powered by this Westbrook performance, he's playing at an absolutely unreal level uh, the last few weeks. Well, really the last couple months. And he's just, you know, he's a better, I don't know if it's all just health or if it's just his efficiency is up right now or he's just doing the things that, that you know, suit his game the best. But that Wizards team is a ton of fun to watch. And him powering it with Beal being such a deadly scorer and really just like a just a complete basketball player now at this point with his playmaking ability as well. It just really makes that a fun team to watch, even if the on-court results aren't exactly where they, you know, could potentially end up being. You can see the the potential that the Wizards management saw when they were like, let's bring in Le- Russell Westbrook. Um, on the other side of that, Donovan Mitchell continued his tear as well, dropping 42 points tonight uh, in a losing effort for the Jazz, yes. Uh, Boyan Bogdanovich also 33 tonight too, so huge scoring outbursts from a couple Jazz players. But they continue to kind of be in that little mini skid that they've been on for the last month or so. Um, I don't think this is going to end up being the biggest deal for them. Um, I think the fact that Donovan Mitchell is scoring at that level night in, night out might be a little little off of what they want to be normally. Like I think they'd prefer a more even um, offensive performance. But like we saw Donovan Mitchell carry them in the bubble and in the playoffs last year going toe-to-toe with Denver and Jamal Murray. So if Donovan can continue scoring at this level without completely dominating the shots and the game and the game itself, like it's going to be all about efficiency for him. But 42 points tonight. Um, next game, De'Aaron Fox, Sacramento versus New Orleans. And De'Aaron Fox goes for 43. Now, another uh, he's another player where the efficiency is a really key thing uh, for him. So 50% from the field tonight, 5 of 13 from 3. And, you know, the threes are going to continue to get better. I think that's something that he's worked on his first few years in the league for sure. And as that number goes up, as that efficiency gets higher, it's only going to unlock what that team is able to do even more, hopefully. They are still coached by Luke Walton, but at some point he's going to just become so good that he's going to just propel that team forward regardless of who is coaching. On the other side, though, the Pelicans get huge performances from Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, and I have to imagine that this is probably what they were envisioning when they thought about the two of them together when they maxed out Brandon Ingram. Uh, So Ingram goes for 34, Zion goes for 30, and the way they were playing off each other really is the key here. Like, a lot of times in the in the end of game scenarios when the games get tight, you see Sam Van Gundy and the team turning to Ingram, and they're like, "All right, go get a bucket, go make a play, go do whatever you can, you know, go make something happen." And they keep the ball out of Zion's hands, and Zion, you know, for his position, is a pretty skilled playmaker. He's a pretty skilled ball handler, and he has really elevated that team's performance in the minutes that they have let him run the offense so this is a little bit closer to you know seeing the two of them exist perfectly like perfectly coexist i should say and as a result they get the win um next up joel Embiid, back from his his uh his injury very glad that it wasn't uh, more severe because he was having an mvp season before and he seems to have just basically picked up right where he left off. He goes for 36 points tonight with 15 free throws in just 26 minutes against Dallas. Philadelphia absolutely just beat down the Mavericks in the second half of that game. And to see him be like just so effortless, effortlessly go at the Dallas Bigs. I mean, obviously the the quality is uh, the quality of player is a little lower compared to like if he was going to going up against, like, the upper echelon Western Conference centers. Like, I guess, like, Gobert, like, Jokic, like, you know, those guys. Montrez Harrell, even to an extent. Um, Mark Gasol has always had a good good um, streak for defending him. So, it you know, 
he, yes, it was a little bit easier competition, but this type of dominance and this type of efficiency is what he's been doing all season. And then the last one I wanted to talk about is Julius Randle. The Knicks pull away and just beat down my Lakers, and it's unfortunate, but no AD, no LeBron. It's okay. For the Knicks, this is a great win. This is a win that, you know, a team fighting for a playoff spot should get. They should be able to beat the lesser team with more injuries. And Julius Randle goes off for 34 and 10. Now, he was an all-star this year for a reason. And, you know, I'm sure part of this was he wanted to show out against his old team. But he continues to just, you know, power that offense. Really the defense, too. But powers that offense for Tom Thibodeau. And everything seems to start and end with him and his effort. He is completely bought in to the Thibodeau system. And that, that whole team really has. Like, they're all playing so hard. And it starts with him as the quote-unquote all-star player on the team, as the top player on the team, um, If I mean, depending on how you value that. But he puts in another strong performance. There were parts of the season earlier on where he looked just flat-out exhausted from all the minutes that he'd been playing. And I was a little concerned that, you know, the Knicks were going to kind of hit this point where they just, like, the wheels fell off because they were young. They weren't used to the style of coaching that – that Thibodeau likes to run. They weren't used to that, you know, that hard-ass defense and offense. Like, it's got to be exhausting, especially if you're not used to it. But they have bought in completely, and Randall looked absolutely great there. And it, that's going to be a fun team to watch, whether it's in the play play-in tournament or if they make it into the playoffs. They're going to be a, a tough out. They're going to be a big problem for whoever they end up matching up with. I think that's everything. If I missed any big performances or anything else like that, please drop it in the comments and let me know. I appreciate uh, anyone watching this, and I will be back soon.